Good afternoon. I'm Frank Rasmoni of Park Bioservices. I'm here today to talk about sterilizing a semi-rigid isolator uh, and to point out some of the differences of uh, sterilizing a semi-rigid versus a flexible film isolator. I'm also going to show you the basic equipment that we have. We're going to use two different, we're going to show two different methods. One is a hand sprayer uh, where we use uh, something like Clydox or a parasitic acid based uh, sterilizer, but there's any number of different sterilizers that can be used. There's Clydox, there's uh, ABQ, there's Alcide, uh, MD10, uh, there's Wilklens. So a variety of different methods. Uh, it doesn't really matter, they'd all be the same as far as what we're going to do in the demonstration. Okay. So that's, that's the spray bottle, clean spray bottle that everybody would have. The second method is using a, a misting device or an atomizer such as this, where you have the spray bottle. It's attached by a hose to a compressor. Uh, a lot of people feel that this gives you better coverage because it puts out a very fine atomized mist. So it's a very fine mist that gets better penetration, better coverage inside the ice. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do one or two things. Either we're going to open up both of the doors, pass the spray device in, and spray with the hand device inside the isolator. Or uh, if you have a little nozzle on the outside like this, uh, you can spray, put your spray in this way. Uh, in this case, it would cover just the port. And it really doesn't get very good coverage of the whole isolator. So you need to have several ports, uh, several little uh, half inch sealable ports like this throughout the body if you're going to do it that way. So for this, we're going to do it the way most people do it, and just introduce the sprayer into the isolator. So now we're going to open up the inner door, and we're going to pass the, pass the bottle of spray in. Okay. So the inner door is open, and just open the outer door and pass in the hand spray bottle. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to take the hand spray bottle and inside the isolator I'm going to turn it on like a fine mist and I'm going to just start spraying all the surfaces in the isolator. Everything that you can see, the top of the shelf, the front of the shelf, under the shelf, the surfaces of the door, inside the port, we're going to reach around and completely cover everything with a mist. Uh, an isolator this size, 300 mils should be sufficient, but you know you can go up to 500, even 700 mils, and really completely wet everything. Okay? So that also includes whatever equipment you have in the isolator. So here I have a cage. I'm going to actually wet the cage, put that back on the shelf, move on to the next cage. I'm going to completely mist that top, bottom, inside, outside, all surfaces. Okay? So now this is completely covered with a mist. Continue spraying the floor. Make sure that you cover. Before you put the cage down, maybe spray the floor, put the cage down on top of a wet surface. So you've got good coverage throughout the ice plate. Right. Now, at this point, I'm going to add that um, one of the methods that I know Taconic uses is that they do an initial spray down with a hand sprayer, and then they do a secondary sterilization with a with the atomizer. Okay. That's really, uh, you might think that that's overkill, but uh, if we're talking about germ-free work, it's particularly effective to get complete saturation of that isolator. So if you did it that way, what you do is do one sterilization, let it all set up, and then do a second sterilization completely from scratch uh, with, the, with the atomizer. Okay? So now, now, now that we have, uh, we're going to assume that the isolator is completely misted, all right? We're going to... Uh, we're going to turn the blower on for 15 minutes in the positive direction, okay? What that's allowing the, uh, the mist to do 
is that the mist is going to circulate throughout the isolator and it's going to come out the exhaust filter. That is going to sterilize the exhaust filter. 15, the, the range is anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes, and it really is a, a facility-specific uh, determination of how much is necessary. You know, if you're starting with a, a clean, brand-new filter, uh, perhaps 15 minutes would be enough. Um, at this point, I'd like to point out a difference between sterilizing a semi-rigid and a flexible film isolator. Typically, when you have a flexible film isolator, the filter is already been sterilized. And then there's a whole procedure that you go through about installing it, puncturing a mylar film, that sort of thing. Uh, we're not going to cover that here today. We're going to talk about the semi-rigid, but that is one of the key differences. Typically, on a semi-rigid isolator, the filters are not sterile, and you're sterilizing them in place. So now, uh, I'm going to say that 15 minutes has elapsed. We're going to reverse the blower motor, and we're going to put it on negative. We're going to allow it to run for 15 minutes to a half hour on negative. What that's going to do is to sterilize the intake filter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and disconnect the blow motor and reverse the direction. Now at this point, we've sealed all the doors. It's run 15 minutes positive, 15 minutes negative. We're going to reverse the blower back to positive, which is on here now. So we're going to run it. We're going to just leave the isolator stand for three hours. And if you have any external filters, some people wrap the filter with a plastic bag and tie it off at the bottom. That just makes sure that the vapor stays in. Um, personally, my recommendation is that doesn't make that much difference, but you know, it really depends on the comfort level and what people want to do as a facility thing, but that is an option. Uh, in the case of these, the filters are inside of plenum, so you don't even see them, so you can't really see them. Right? So once we let it stand for, for uh, three hours, at, what I recommend is doing that in the morning, do your sterilization, let it stand for three hours, then before everyone leaves for the day, you turn the, the blower motor on all the way open, you open a ball valve or your gate valve, and get that flow going to the maximum. Your, your magnetic gauge is going to be pegged off the chart. What you're going to do now is you're getting rid of all those vapors that have built up inside the isolator. So what should happen is within 12 to 24 hours, you should come in and then verify and check the isolator and just to see if there's any moisture left over. If there's any moisture left over, you've got to continue letting the isolator ventilate on full open for an additional period of time. Uh, that could be dependent on the time of year that you're doing it. So if it is during the summertime and there's a higher humidity in the facility, it might take a little bit longer to accomplish that. Okay. So, I talked about the different method of sterilizing by hand and then sterilizing with the, uh, with the, the misting apparatus. I'm going to cover that section next. I'm going to now place the spray device, the spray atomizer, inside the isolator and I'm going to see how that works versus the spray ball. The nice things about using the hand sprayer versus the atomizer is that you can actually spray inside a completely closed isolator. Uh, with this, you have to leave the door open to get the hose in there, unless you've installed some kind of special uh, spraying uh, fixture. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and s turn on the compressor. And now I'm going to start misting the isolator.
now. Just to talk briefly, we've done both the spray method, both with the hand sprayer and with the atomizer. We are going to, uh, just to emphasize, that it's exactly the same as far as you run it 15 minutes positive to sterilize the exhaust, 15 minutes negative to sterilize the intake, and then let it stand for three hours. At the end of the day, turn it on and let it exhaust for between 12 to 24 hours. Again, checking to make sure that it's, it's completely dry at the end of it, and that you're also not sensing or smelling any fumes coming out of the exhaust. So, uh, although you use two different methods of spraying, it's still virtually almost identical. All right, so that's important to note. Um, if we're talking about germ-free work, there's different families of cold sterilants. There's the chlorine dioxide based, which I'm most comfortable with, and then there's also the paracetic acid and other types of sterilants. Uh, many places that are doing germ-free work sterilize initially with a paracetic acid, but then switch and sterilize with a chlorine dioxide. Uh, it may seem like overkill, but different organisms that are may be resistant to the paracetic acid will not be resistant to the Zydox and vice versa. So it's good if you use perhaps two different methods, particularly if we're talking about germ-free work.